Your next speaker I have the honor of introducing is Dr. Susan Wilder. Dr. Wilder is the founder and CEO of LifeScape Medical Associates and LifeScape Premier. She received her Bachelor's of Arts in Biology and Psychology from Washington University in St. Louis and her medical degree from the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Dr. Wilder completed her specialty training in family medicine at Andrews Air Force Base, where she stayed on as faculty and assistant chairman of the Department of Family Medicine. She served in Africa as part of Operation Restoration Hope and has received the Armed Forces Expeditionary and Meritorious Service Medals. She has a long-standing background following her military service, including as founding director of the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale Family Medicine Residency Program. She is board certified in family medicine and earned a certificate of added qualifications in sports medicine. She has written several textbook chapters and journal articles with special emphasis on patient-centered medicine. She is the former president of the Arizona Academy of Family Physicians and served on the board of directors for the Arizona Foundation for Women, a not-for-profit corporation dedicated to preventing domestic violence and child abuse. She is a renowned national speaker and frequent media guest and named one of the state's top family physicians ranked one of the nation's top family physicians by the Consumers Research Council, and ranked by best doctors as among the top 4% of family physicians nationally. She practices what she preaches and is no stranger to this conversation. She is married and has three daughters and a golden retriever. <laughs> two, two hamsters. This is very important. What else? We've got all this in the next six days, too, right? She grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii, is a former triathlete, enjoys yoga and cooking. Please welcome Dr. Susan Wilder. Thank you. And thank you to Annie for the honor of, of being here to speak with you. Um, I have to dedicate this talk. We just, um, many of us lost a friend recently to a tragedy upon a tragedy, and I have to dedicate this talk to him and his family, and to my guardian angels, my dad, my sister Katie, my brother Guy, um, and many, many friends, family, patients who teach me every day that health is a treasure that's taken for granted way too often, that attitude is a choice, and that happiness is a verb. Right? Right? So, you've heard a little bit about myself. That's, no wonder I feel tired. My <laughs> God. I don't know what I've been trying to do. Um, that adult child of an alcoholic thing, I think. I have my older sister here, too, who's even ten times more of a power woman than I am. So, thank you, Sally. It's all your fault. Um, but anyway, I am a bit of a rebel. I am passionate about creating a healthier nation, one patient at a time, and thanks to Annie and Jen, to maybe 150 patients at a time. Um, I think that health is not only an economic imperative, it is a social and moral imperative. And believe me, I got beaten to a pulp during the healthcare debate. And frankly, I have been advising on both sides of the aisle for many years. Carolyn Allen and I have worked together many times in the past. I don't care which side of the aisle solutions come from. I'm about solutions. So let's just talk a little bit about where we are in healthcare right now. People like to preach about the United States having the best healthcare in the world. Okay, we are number one in the world in one metric. Cost cost. We spend more than double the next highest country in per capita health expenditures. Over $7,500 per person in the United States is spent on health care. We rank behind Bosnia in life expectancy, 47th. We rank behind Cuba in healthy life expectancy the number of years you can expect to live without a chronic disease. And let me tell you a little bit about the other 99% club. 
99% of American citizens have, one, have at least one cardiovascular risk factor. Only 1% of us have none. We rank um, behind Bangladesh in equitable access to health care. And during this recession, I have seen third world things happening in Scottsdale, Arizona. I have seen realtors going without prenatal care. I have seen teachers unable to pay for their children's meds because they're pink slipped every summer and they can't afford the COBRA insurance to carry them over the summer. I have seen people stop their cancer care or not start cancer care because their home equity line of credit has been frozen. That is unacceptable to me in the United States of America. We, thank you. We have accepted a system that is, has allowed a hyperinflation of health care costs. Every, everything we do costs so much more. Every piece of equipment I buy costs so much more than any other place on earth. So these costs have just escalated. And if you think the housing bubble was ugly when that burst, the health care bubble has to. And that's not going to be pretty either. We have a system so complex that the best way I've heard it described is it's a Gordian knot designed by Rube Goldberg. <laughs> okay? And although there are many things about the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, we call it PPACA, there are a lot of great things and important things in that legislation. I'm not sure that another 7,000 pages of legislation is going to make that system more functional. We have information systems that don't talk to each other. You know, our information sim systems are institution centric. So I can't look up Jen and find every single test that's ever been done on Jen. We have more costs in the system because we are having to duplicate tests and procedures that were already done by someone else just because our information systems are a tower of Babel. We have premiums, health care premiums, outpacing health care costs. So if anyone followed the insurance company's profit margins through the recession, they were very healthy, good investment. Okay, good investment. But we're accepting a system. We were we actually, if you uh, read about spin, there's a great book called Deadly Spin by Wendell Potter. Wendell Potter was a former Cigna executive that I heard testify before Congress in the midst of the health care reform deba debates. And he talked about how he wrote the playbook about socialized medicine to scare everyone into the arms of profitized medicine. We can't afford for every family to have $14,000 in premiums a year. Small businesses like mine cannot afford double-digit premium increases for our employees year upon year upon year upon year. Our premiums have gone up over 120% in the seven years that I've run LifeScape. And at the same time, what else goes up? Our co-pays, our deductibles, our co-insurances, our cost of medications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does anyone know what the average cost of treating a case of breast cancer, which one of us, eight, one out of eight of us, can expect to have in our lifetimes? It's now anywhere between fifty thousand and five hundred thousand. <laughs> 